cultural identity and maintenance through language programs and cur curriculum development, orthography development, and finally issues related to sovereignty and decolonization. Uh, give a welcome to Mariana. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, introduction and uh, um, thank you to the organizers for inviting me. This is um, I always like to talk about tones. Um, this is not necessarily what I you know do. I do like uh, you heard in the introduction a lot of things. So um, so the reason that I'm really interested on uh, uh, tones is because. Um, it was important to understand the tones in order to be able to create pedagogical materials. So I'm just really uh, focusing on uh, understanding this with that uh, in, uh, in mind. So um, I want to take you to Mexico now. And we are going to be, I think this uh, section will be focusing on uh, um, indigenous languages. So I will start with um, Ottoman Gain languages. And, uh, um, the Chatino languages are members of the Onamangan language stock and form a genetic subgroup within the Zapotecan. And uh, um, here is a tree of the um, Otomangan languages. And uh, so we have the East and the West. And we're interested in here in seeing the East. That's where uh, Chatinos um, and the Zapotecan language family comes from. And if we see in this uh, um, um, area is we have the Zapotecan, and according to the word that a, a linguist, like specifically uh, Kaufman, has said that this uh, Zapotec, uh, the Zapotecan, uh, split and be, uh, made two languages about 2,500. So let's say it's not very long time ago when um, this uh, language split and made um, the Zapotec and uh, Chatino, but. Um, of course, this is um, not only one Zapotec language or one Chatino, these are um, different languages. And uh, um, so, but we are related to uh, Zapotec language. And uh, um, here we have a map of the Chatino languages. And uh, um, according to the Mexican government, um, there is one Chatino language. And uh, uh, one of the work that we are doing is to, um, make um, a lot of this, uh, um, like make it you know, more clear for uh, governments to understand the linguistic importance of recognizing, uh, recognizing how languages work. And so we're saying that at Chatinos, um, what is kind of like saying that well, Spanish, Portuguese, and French are one language. They're not, right? Probably um, the, if we said that to um, those speakers, it would be that, no, 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 we're different. And uh, so it's the same thing. That's how different uh, and similar these languages are. So we have in this, uh, um, I don't know if you can see in my computer, I can see very well, but I don't know what you're seeing in here. Okay, this is a gray area. And uh, um, that is a language that is called uh, Sensontepec Chatino. And this language is the one that is closer to the Proto Chatino. And uh, um, this language is um, disyllabic and it has about three tones. So then if we go to uh, Tataltepec, in Tataltepec uh, Chatino, this is, uh, this is only spoken in one community and about like 100 people speak this uh, language, meaning that this is a very high and danger uh, language. And I forgot to say that in Sensontepec, it's a um, large um, region, and um, if you speak this language, you're going to be able to travel to all these uh, communities and be able to communicate with everyone. And it's spoken in about 20 communities, uh, Sensontepec, and Tataltepec only in one community. Now, if we go to the white area, uh, this is what we call Eastern Chatino. And uh, um, in this uh, uh, language, um, it's a little bit, um, it's very interesting because they, they are very like close to each other, the communities, and um, there are about 18 communities that uh, speak this language. And uh, um, there are 15 varieties of uh, this language. So uh, what happens is that every uh, village, right, we have 15 ways of speaking uh, the same word. And uh, uh, so then we're going to be focusing on this, uh, um, on the orange section. And uh, uh, as you see in the map, the Mexican map is what the red dot is. That's what all uh, the Chatino region is. And uh, um, OK. 
So um, some of the innovations, right? So as we were saying earlier, that um, we are um, if we come from the Zapotecan uh, family, and uh, um, so now also Chatino has gone through those innovations. Like the um, the languages have changed over time, and the one that is closer to the Puerto Chatino is uh, Sensontepec. But also within the um, Eastern Chatino uh, language, we have the ones that are more conserv conservative and uh, innovative um, varieties of this uh, language. So um, I decided to show you some examples of uh, words that um, are from uh, uh, Sensontepec, which is Sen, Zacatepec, which is like considered the conservative variety of the Eastern Chatino language. And then the last two is Panex Tlahuaca and San Juan Quiaije, which are like considered innovative uh, varieties of the Eastern Chatino. So then uh, as you see in the first uh, row, and this one, the word for four, is exactly the same in the all um, the, um, the languages examples that I'm showing you here. And, uh, um, and then in the other group, um, I have, um, sorry. So those are, um, I can see, beans, water, squirrel. Those, if you can see that uh, between Sensontepec and Zacatepec, they're different words. But uh, they're similar, they're the same words in the Eastern Chatino. So as we said earlier, that um, Zacatepec belongs to the Eastern Chatino, but is the, mother, uh, is the conservative variety. So, um, and then as we see also that in Zacatepec, those are disyllabic words, and uh, they change to monosyllabic in uh, um, San Juan Quiaije. So then we have the other um, set of words in the animal yellow, uh, oh, I forgot to change the word for piojo, um, that is lice. And uh, um, so all of that, uh, um, the set of words, we can see that sometimes um, from uh, uh, Zacatepec to uh, San Juan Quiaije, Sometimes you will change, like the, you will like the penultimate syllable will will be uh, deleted, or also uh, you will sometimes remove the nasal, and then, or sometimes you will keep the nasal. Sometimes you will keep a vowel, or um, sometimes at the beginning or in between. So that's kind of like you know what I'm um, trying to show you that some of the changes, that, but the majority, uh, the penultimal syllable um, gets removed and it makes uh, San Juan Quiaije uh, monosyllabic. Um, and then, in the last uh, um, set of words, I wanted to compare um, here, Sensontepec and Zacatepec. Those are the words uh, were originally monosyllabic in Sensontepec, and they uh, are disyllabic in uh, Zacatepec, and then they became monosyllabic in uh, Kiaije. So those are some of, like some of the innovations that I've seen in this uh, with some of these uh, languages. But uh, um, let's talk about uh, the people, right? The Chatinos, and uh, so according to the census, which is really hard, but um, they have a number. There are apparently 51,612 Chatino speakers, but that is really difficult. Um, I don't know if, if people said, like, yes, I do speak the language. Or sometimes people will say, like, no, I don't speak the language. So, But that's a number, the official number that the government has um, about the uh, Chatino speakers. And um, depending on the area, but the majority of the Chatinos are farmers. And, uh, um, also, there is a mass migration uh, to the cities and also to the U.S. And uh, um, in the United States, you will find them in North Carolina, in Alabama, Florida, Washington State, and other parts. And uh, um, now, there is, um, in Mexico, and uh, uh, we struggle with um, the rights of indigenous languages. And uh, um, often, like, some of the, um, you know, the ideas that people have about language, indigenous languages is that there are dialects that are, um, and because of that, that there are dialects that can be not written or, you know, like it's just, you know, they have random grammar or they don't have a grammar and uh, they're not suitable for education or uh, learning by others. But um, at the same time, we have uh, more recent uh, young people are becoming to be more proud of uh, their language and they are working towards the recognition of their languages and they're uh, really 
proud of their language as well. So you, you know, sometimes um, you still hear the um, ideas of, you know, these languages not, not being real languages and also uh, young people claiming, you know, their languages. Now we're gonna go to um, San Juan Quiaije, which is the area that uh, I'm gonna talk about the most. And uh, um, so here's a map of Quiaije. Quiaije is here with the start, and um, here is Oaxaca City, and then this is the Pacific Ocean. So that's where we are. And uh, um, Quiaije, these uh, um, there are two communities that speak this variety. And uh, um, this one is Cieneguilla, and this is San Juan Quiaije. And uh, uh, one is in the lowland, and the other one is in the highland. I want to uh, give you a sense of how Quiaije looks a little bit. So this is you know, a very typical kitchen of uh, um, this area. You have the fireplace, you have the comal, where you make tortillas, and uh, the wood, and it's a uh, Kitchens are usually uh, kind of more open because of the smoke. And uh, um, here you have, this is usually how women dress and our two friends who wanted to take a picture uh, with each other. And here's a dance. Um, a friend of, uh, you know, is dancing, having fun. So um, about Kiaije. So the elevation of Kiaije is about, uh, um, about you know, close to 2,000 meters above sea. And uh, um, what is interesting about these communities is that uh, um, the Chatinos, uh, the Chatino languages are changing really rapidly and uh, uh, people are learning more Spanish and, um, and abandoning their languages. But uh, this municipality has been able to maintain the uh, um, Chatino language and uh, um, most of the children, they only speak Chatino, but uh, because of the migration, that is changing as well. But uh, uh, children, when they're born in the village, uh, the first language that they acquire is uh, Chatino. And uh, um, also there is a, um, the elders, they, um, over time people get trained on how to do ritual speech. And uh, um, when they get to uh, be the elders, they will be the ones who will recite the uh, political speeches or ceremonial speeches. And so we have um, a lot of that uh, still in, uh, um, in this municipality. And uh, um, people are really proud of the language. And, but um, at the same time, there is no uh, Chatino uh, used in schools. Uh, teachers, they only use Spanish. And uh, um, there is no literacy, right? And so, um, People don't know how to read Chatino. And uh, we have been working towards introducing uh, writing, but that is, um, that is for another talk. This, um, but uh, um, they really, you know, there's a strong um, uh, feeling that they uh, want to uh, write Chatino. And um, anyway, but we, I, I was invited to talk about tone. So let's keep going. So, um, okay. Now we're gonna talk about the language, right? How the language works. And uh, um, there is a, like a, the syllabus structure in here. And uh, uh, because of the language becoming, uh, reducing, right? Uh, um, the uh, first syllable, penultimate syllable, or sometimes like the vowels from the uh, conservative varieties. So there's a, a lot of consonant clusters in these um, uh, variety. So we have, and uh, the first one is um, CV, and then nasal CV, and then the second one, CV, CCV, and then we have the consonant, consonant, um, uh, and sonorant, and I don't want to go with all the details of this, but this is kind of like the general idea how the language uh, works. And uh, um, now I want to move to the tones. And uh, um, so we basically have uh, phonetically um, a distinction of 11 tones. And, uh, uh, but uh, to be honest, like it's been like a really uh, complicated thing for me to talk about tones and uh, you know, sometimes phonetic because sometimes we don't pay attention to those who are not necessarily uh, found in isolation, but they found in context, but they're different from the ones in isolation. So anyway, but I think that I, um, 
want to uh, talk to you more of the sequences of the tones and less, so I think it's a lot more clear of how the language uh, works in terms of the tones. So then we have three sequences. Um, the one that has the zero sequence, the one that has one sequence and the one that has two sequences. And so then how do I organize the sequences? So the, um, the one that uh, has the uh, zero sequence, those are the toneless. And the toneless, um, they have the tendency when they're in a second or third position, they're going to be taking the tone of the previous tone. And uh, um, so we have a list of uh, the... Um, Zero, one, oh no, just one word I use. Um, and then we have the one that is a one, um, tone, a one uh, tone sequence and the one that, that has two sequences. The two sequences, the way I am organizing this is that those are the ones that have floating tones. And what is in parentheses, those are the floating tones. And uh, so in total, we have 14 uh, tone sequences in this language. And uh, um, I wanna... Na con na sku ke na sna. That is with one sequence, and now with the two. Actually, the one with the zero is ya. Na sna la na ha ta. Okay. So the 11 basic tones uh, form the 14 tone sequences. And uh, um, now with the one, uh, um, one that has the uh, zero tone sequence, which is a tone list, and we have seven tone sequences that has uh, one uh, tone sequence. And then we have six that has two, meaning that we have six tones with floating tones. And uh, so the, I put the list of the, if we have time, we can go back to them. But uh, uh, these are basically the ones that uh, um, are found in uh, um, with floating tones. So um, now the sequences, uh, the tone sequences distinguish lexem, lexems, right? And, uh, and so I wanted to show you like some of these tone uh, changes that sometimes uh, um, it's good to have like with the, uh, the same structure of the word in, uh, um, with different tones. La, 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 la. So as you can hear, the first two words are they have the same tones. And uh, um, now they also the tone sequences they mark aspect. And uh, um, so we have in the, here three uh, verbs in the completive, the progressive, the habitual, and the potential. And so we have here um, ku, 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 ku. And then a uh, cat, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. And then count, um, qua, 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 qua. And then also um, the tone sequences they mark a uh, person, um, subject person, in um, eight, ku, ku, kong, cat, you. You, you counted. Qua, qua, quang. And also, uh, we find that the expansion of the, the TCs uh, with um, a lot of the times when we present about these words are called them cute, but I don't think they're like cute. Some of them are like cute, but they're not, you know, all cute, but they all have, they're in this category. So I'm going to just say a few. Que, se, li, stone. I won't go with the whole list. So um, also we find the um, TC2 going to borrowing words. And uh, so these words, they either come from Spanish or they come from um, uh, Nahuatl words. And uh, there are a few, uh, sia, sa, 
God bless you. So they, so then you know when you have this uh, tone, it, um, that means that these words are not native of uh, this language. So in context, how does it work? Well, um, this uh, language is very local, meaning that the first um, tone, if uh, it's a tone that will uh, affect the toneless, will change just uh, by group one, two, and then. Uh, one, two, so it doesn't spread. So we have this example of in, in one that is only, um, both of these are toneless. When two toneless words are together, nothing happens. They both maintain um, their phonetic um, level. Uh, and then uh, the other one, right? But then um, if we go with the first, um, on uh, sequence, here we have a number one, number five, number seven, number eight. Um, those tones, right, it will change to mid-low when uh, the first uh, tone is depending on the tone that appears as a first word. And those are like, that's how um, the tone is get affected by uh, one um, uh, tone sequence. So then we have the ones that have the plurin tones, the, who are the two sequences. So here, as you see, um, all of these words, the toneless words, will take the floating tones of the preceding words. So, for example, in a, a cry, uh, will be in isolation, and uh, it's... If you're being poetic or romantic, I guess you can say trees, that you cry trees, right? But uh, um, this is a little bit weird, but I couldn't find a, a, a word to put in there, but let's just pretend that I'm a poet and that I, you know, doing this thing. Um, so then it will be in isolation, and in context will be okay? And number two, it's uh, it's wa. And then uh, uh, in isolation, so all the floating tones of the first word will go to the second word in context. Okay, and uh, um, now what I uh, you know I'm trying to uh, show you in here is just a more than um, I guess simplify way how the tones in this language work. And uh, um, from the 11 tones, right, we have 14 sequences. And uh, um, all of these, um, you know, the words, the majority of the words in Kiaije are uh, monosyllabic. And uh, um, they have uh, lexical and grammatical functions, the uh, tone sequences. And uh, um, also, they um, have shown you how the tone sandy uh, works with, um, you know, toneless and uh, with the uh, one or two tone sequences. Now, all of this, right, there is a connection to it with the innovation of how the Chatino uh, languages have, uh, all the changes that they have gone through. And uh, um, this um, pattern we can see that we have in, uh, um, let's see, my mouse, yeah. So we have all of these are the tone sequences and we can see, right, with the correspondences with Zacatepec. And uh, um, also, uh, I'm presenting another paper uh, next week about specifically with the relationship with the sequences with Sensontepec and Tataltepec. But uh, um, I felt that it was a good way to end this to say that, well, okay, I will be really interested to know if there is intonation in. Um, San Juan Kiaije Chatino, and then how to study a language that has a large tone uh, inventory, and uh, um, Dikani will be able to tell us about the work that he's doing with um, a language that also has um, a lot of tones. And, uh, um, and if we have time, we can hear the uh, handout that you have, but I want to make sure that I you know, was um, good with my time. Thank you. Or we can play, or we can look at the handout, or not? Yes. Oh, great. So we do have time? Maybe? Yes. Okay. Nice. 
Okay, so can I have one, please? Okay, so um, the way you're gonna read your handout, and uh, um, this is actually a recording that we did when we had together uh, many of the Eastern Chatino speakers in a workshop in Oaxaca. So we recorded how they will say uh, the same words and uh, how they will say it in each village. So that's what you're gonna hear. So the way to look at your table is that, uh, um, so this is a story behind this. So imagine like you have 15 varieties and you have people who wanna write their language and how can they write their language with having different tones. So then one thing that we've been working on is, is that uh, to help them to figure a way that they can actually all read from each other's work. And we uh, learned that uh, there's uh, cognates among all these varieties so you can actually group them. And by grouping them, you can see how similar or different uh, the tones are. So here we have, this is the group Right, where we put the words. And Yol is Yolotepec, Teotepec, Panislahuaca, Amialtepec, San Juan Quiaije, and Ixtapan. Those are some of the um, speakers that were there. So then you will hear someone saying, Grupo A, and then each person will say it in uh, variety. Okay, so let's play this. Grupo A. Kirha, Ipa, Nga, Sul 
สุกเกะกูโคบกตานันสันนังมุยาสุกามิสนาเดียสกาสนังเดียสกามิสนาเดียสกาสนังเดียสกามิสนาเดียสกาขอบคุณมากและถ้ามีคำถามจากลิสต์ของผมฉันจะยินดีรับคำตอบเอลเวนทอนส์ um I guess what would you want to know about them or well uh huh, I don't know how can I respond that no there yeah no quotas yeah Uh, we only have nine vowels, mm -hmm. and they are, I don't know, uh, you will, the thing about this is that uh, we have, I mean, uh, Panix La Huaca is really interesting with that, because actually the, that variety, there is a correspondence between the vowels and the tones, and you only will find, like, for example, um, in uh, um, some of the, um, The tones that are, are merged, like it, we have, we created more tones, right? And uh, some of the ones that are merged in Panisla Huaca, they still make that distinction in uh, uh, when they, even if they are in the same tone uh, group or category, they will make the tone, the vowel different to be able to distinguish uh, that uh, that tone from. And uh, we don't really know whether. Uh, Our variety in terms of tones is more conservative or is an innovative because it seems to me that some of the traits that we see from uh, um, Zacatepec and Sansontepec it seems that uh, uh, they're probably more innovative in uh, some of the tone uh, ways and so I think that the, uh, for us that we don't have a lot, any of the um, you know kind of tone distinction, or are we haven't really studied if there is a correlation between the tones and the vowels, but we have um, non-vowels. Obviously, I just heard them one time, but um, it sounded to me like there was some voice quality differences, uh, and I wonder, because voice quality associations with tone are quite common, so. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, um, maybe what you heard is me exaggerating, so I, I could, you know, say them, oh. but uh, um, the Zapotec uh, languages have more of that, uh, um, the voice quality, but we don't really, in Kiaije, we don't have, um, there is no correspondence between, like, our voice quality with, with tones. I don't, uh, um, yeah. Hi, uh, I was just wondering, uh, maybe you said it, and if you did, I apologize. The floating tones, they only surface if the, the following word is toneless, or can you find them in other cases? Yeah, so they only will like uh, go to the next word when you have the toneless words. Right. And uh, um, sometimes some of the tones that I haven't really, I didn't, um, talk about like what happens if they are not toneless, the following words, right? And uh, um, usually they, um, some of the tones, it will take the floating tone and some of them won't. But uh, in terms of like the, what uh, really, you know, travels is with the uh, toneless words. Mm -hmm. 
just going to have you follow up a little bit about the intonation part and just your impression is like impressions of it of, of if there is intonation or not and if you know if there's any intonation in some of the surrounding languages if there's been work done mm -hmm. on that just just your thoughts I guess <laughs> yeah Christian will talk more about that but I started uh, working on the um, on the speed and intonation and uh, um, so it's really when you, in the natural speech, what I found is, is that when you have, um, so I, rec I have a recording of someone who's really upset. And, uh, uh, and, and it's interesting how uh, when it goes with intonation, right, it erases the entire phrase. It's not like the only specific words are being raised on the other one. So I, um, I don't know if there is intonation in this language. I will have to really like uh, pay attention to that, but, um, I was interested in looking at the speed and also how people were expressing, like for example, um, if someone is, you know, um, uh, doing a reported uh, an information, saying like, or, you know, uh, whispering and all, like how do they do it, right? And it seems that uh, um, it's, the Sandy stays the same, the tones uh, stay the same, but they only get raised. And so I, um, I can't really say more about the intonation, but just, you know, uh, Christian will take care of that for uh, Triki, which is also Oromangan language too. Megan Armstrong Abrami, um, I guess following up on that, okay. <laughs> um, are there particles in Chatino that convey a lot of the meanings that we find intonation yeah. conveying? Like question marking, yeah. is there a question marking particle? Well, with tone, for example, in, uh, um, um, and it seems to me that, for example, if I am, maybe I am all like, um, I guess um, the languages that I speak uh, maybe influence some of this, but uh, uh, if you said, ya comiste, right in Spanish, ya comiste? And then in Chatino, it said, Tabaycuá. So the A ah is a, a vowel, but with the tone is A. Ah, and it uh, and also takes the Sandy, too. And depending on, like, the word that precedes the A ah is what uh, would take the tone. But the, the marker, the question marker is that, A. Ah. And you have, you know, other, like, particles. We're just, we have a lot of particles and adverbs and uh, um, so when you know, need to express something but uh, um, with those you know particles depending on if the tone is like a toneless and then you, you will take the sandy it will change but uh, um, yeah so then I would say that if um, we take all the particles in a part of a speech I'm sure we can find something interesting for example in a uh, um, to say a phrase, um, y así decía in Spanish. This is how I used to say it or something. And it will be, then we come. And so then, uh, that is a thing to say that to give the emphasis that then, right? And so um, that actually stays really high. And that it gives you the idea that uh, um, in the emphasis that it, um, yeah, that it will be, uh, it will be a little bit different. You will be expressing something different. But uh, um, yeah, so you do have some, you know, particles that will tell you that intonation pattern, but uh, I haven't really done any research on yeah, that. Yeah, or just like the trade-off that yeah. if you have all these particles yeah. to mm -hmm. convey those meanings, why would you have to do them intonationally when you're yeah, using I'm, F0 for other stuff? No, but I think it, it will be interesting to see whether, because I think it, uh, we haven't really studied intonation. Oh, there is very little work done in indigenous languages. And I think that's something that I, um, I we use some of the intonation of, uh, or maybe like I started looking into the intonation in English or Spanish to be able to understand some of these things, whether it's an intonation or not. But I think it is, it, that's an area that we have, we don't really know much about. Well, maybe I don't know much about, but I, I think it, um, we know that the, these languages are not really like well described. So then to study the tones is like another task. And so uh, for us, like I've been working on the tone system for a long time, and uh, um, so now I think uh, we have the tone uh, system figured out that I think uh, now we can move into see what other stuff we can see in the language. But uh, um, yeah. Thank you. 
Christine Yu. <clears throat> um, so uh, yesterday we had this workshop and we were talking about um, uh, African American English prosody and something that came up was you know, expanding the sort of varieties of English that come into the study of you know, studying intonation, not just whatever mainstream American English is. And so one thing I was really struck by, so you played us that amazing you know, set of um, tone correspondences and they're like, I don't know what, six or seven, eight, I don't know, varieties, maybe more. Um, how, I mean, uh, I, my understanding was looking at all those different varieties were actually, was actually super helpful for you to understand the categories of your variety of Chitino itself. And I'm wondering if you could say a little bit more about that because you know, <clears throat> even for um, general, you know, MAE Toby, the categories are kind of controversial. So I'm wondering if somehow by studying those varieties, we might be able to help. So I'm wondering if we can learn something from Chitino. Yeah. Um we actually, that, uh, no one, at that time when I started working in uh, tones in Kiaije, uh, no one uh, had done work on uh, uh, any of the, the tones in, uh, uh, in general of the Chatino languages. And what I did was, um, it just, you know, I, um, I didn't study phonology or phonetics at the time, so I was just kind of like trying to figure out this, uh, with, you know, kind of practical ways. I just got a list of words and I was just like, oh, this sounds similar to this one or this sound a little bit like that one. And uh, um, so then we started working with like pairs, uh, words that were similar. And uh, um, so then we kind of started slowly grouping like what sounded similar and different. And and then you kind of play with your cards, the rising, the falling. But, um, that took us a long time because, um, like I said, there was no uh, previous work done in this language. And uh, um, so then uh, we were one day with uh, um, Jeff Rush. Uh, he is a linguist who did um, a um, grammar on Yaitepec Chatino, a variety that is also uh, in Eastern Chatino. And uh, we just sat together and we started looking into words. And how do you say in this variety? How do you say in this variety? So then by group, by having those groups, we slowly started grouping also that variety. And then, uh, um, so we thought actually by studying Kiaije, because Kiaije has a, a large tone inventory in the one that has the most uh, tones, using the word of list, uh, going to um, Yaitepec, we saw that Yaitepec had less tones, but still the correspondences with those groups were very uh, good. So then with the same word uh, list, we started moving with other varieties. And then once, like, you know, we did about 10 communities, we were like, it's really uh, uniform, really nice uh, correspondences among all of these um villages and uh, that's how we kind of like you know and we also started teaching people how to read it right the tones without like doing the segments or spelling but we only work with uh grouping and that was really um interesting because it seems that people don't get so much caught up in the uh, tone or the internet or you know the sounded but more into the grouping so we realized that actually that was a way to um work with the pedagogical materials because then you keep your tone um, the way you speak it in your community, but you can actually read the tones of the other communities by knowing that, uh, you know, all the groups that you have in your, um, in your you know, local language. But uh, we started first with Kiaije, and then from Kiaije, we moved to other varieties. Thank you.